we take out a biopsy, we get even more exciting information. And making an MRI or a CT scan, of course, it's non-invasive, and you would think that could be a substitute for looking at the single fibers. But in those studies where we take out both a biopsy and do the MRI scan, we get very different types of information. And one reason for that is because changes in muscle architecture is also occurring, allowing basically muscle fibers to increase much more in size than what we see from the, from the anatomical measurements of actual cross-sectional area from the MRI. So if I had to choose, I would go for the muscle biopsy and not the MRI. In this particular study, uh, you saw it before by the Norwegians, Eric Gunnarsson and so on, with the eccentric training on the biceps. Looking at the biopsies, you see, I apologize for this, it's very difficult to see, but here you have the changes in area with the eccentric training, percentage changes for the one, 2A and 2X fibers, sorry, the weighted mean over here. And here you see the changes with the concentric training really not happening uh, anything significant over here. If we have an uh, increase over here, you see a more pronounced percentage gain in the area of type 2 fibers, which means that the relative area of 2 versus 1 fibers is increasing by 41%. Oh no, 12%, you have it down here. Or from an athletic point of view, I think from an athlete point of view, this is very important to have this increase, preferential increase in the, in the area of the most explosive type fibers that we have. And the fact that they are top two fibers, still you have to appreciate that this is 2A fibers, so they will also be endurant. They will also have mitochondria. So they will also be fatigue resistant, but they will be powerful and explosive at the same time. So ideally for the most athletes to have that particular increase going on in here. And you see that proportion in the relative area proportion of type 2 fibers is increased from 64% to 73% uh, as a result of this preferential increase in type 2 fiber area in response to this eccentric training. So I think uh, it's, quite, it's, it's quite, from a functional point of view in athletes, quite nice to have this increase in type 2 fiber area in response to maximum eccentric uh, training. So this is just a summary. Um, it seems that we can have greater increases in muscle fiber area with the maximum eccentric training compared to concentric training uh, alone. Um, some studies have shown that if you do eccentric training and then stop training and then wait for some five weeks and take a, a new muscle biopsy, then the, then the increase in muscle fiber area is more persistent following eccentric training compared to concentric training. So it tends to stay on, to stay on uh, for, a, for a longer time. This uh, particular, if you are interested in using this uh, exercise modality, I would like to point your attention to this particular review here. Some years ago it came out, the effects of eccentric versus concentric resistance training on strength and muscle size in healthy adults. And this is basically just taken out of their conclusions. So eccentric training at high intensities, more effective in promoting in gains in muscle mass, uh, both measured as simply as circumference, you can do that on your athletes if you like, but also using MRI or CT, uh, muscle cross-section error is increased here. They didn't look at muscle biopsy data, but if they had, it would have shown the same trend. And they also concluding that probably the higher magnitude of adaptation in muscle size with the eccentric training is related to the simply higher loads that are developed during this type of exercise modality compared to the conventional types of training.